Hello, and welcome back to Zero Escape. So, at this point in the game, we only need two more endings. And, well, technically three endings, because once we see these last two, we can unlock the true ending. Um, now, here's the thing. I'm still not quite sure how to get the endings. But my guess is that we have to start here, and I think there's supposed to be a choice that we're supposed to make that we didn't make before. And I guess go along one of these two doors. And then, you know, choose from here. <clears throat> now... I'm not entirely sure how this will work. I'm going to see if I can just, you know, skip to the ones I need to go to and then, you know, try try to do it from there. But I honestly don't know. So you may see a lot of skipping around. Um, I'll try to keep in any new dialogue. Um, but other than that, I don't really think, um, or I don't really know what we're going to do here. So I have a guide, kind of, but it's a little confusing. So bear with me. Anyways, let's get to the second class cabins. My map of ship match. Pirate ship picture of a dog. Oh, okay, so you can actually start from the beginning or just like go to specific parts. So let me see here. Pro, so uh, we're back in the freezer. I decided not to go uh, to that one other uh, one I looked at because if I look at it correctly, the, I, the, the choice that I'm supposed to make uh, in that first door that I was... Uh, telling you I'd go to first um, was uh, the choice that clove or not clo um, that um, Santa would give you the four leaf clover and you basically choose whether you don't want to take it or not I already took it so that was the correct thing to do next thing to do is that I actually have to change some of my choices um, for what I was talking about to uh, her about the dry eyes. Uh, it is kind of weird. Oh, but it can turn into a liquid. Oh, carbon dioxide turns to liquid if you put it under high enough pressure. But at one atmosphere, normal air pressure... It won't turn into a liquid, right? Oh, that's right. Instead of melting, it'll do what's called sublimating and change immediately from a solid state to a gaseous one. See, that is weird. Water's a liquid between 32 degrees and 212 degrees. So why isn't that the case for carbon dioxide? There's a kind of ice that doesn't turn into liquid when it goes above 32 degrees. Hmm? Huh? I heard about it. Its melting point is 96 degrees. Ice with a melting point of 96 degrees? You mean there's water that freezes at 96 degrees? Yeah, well... You could also look at it as ice that won't melt until it's 96 degrees. So what's this ice with a melting point of 96 degrees called? I heard it's called Ice 9. Ice 9? Originally, Ice 9 was a made-up substance invented by a science fiction author. But recently, scientists have discovered that such a substance actually exists. Wait, hold up. So is this thing called Ice 9, or is it water? Like I said, if the ice is over 96 degrees, it'll be liquid. If it's under that, it'll solidify. So, you could think of it as a polymorph of H2O. Here, think of it like diamonds and graphite. They're both made of carbon, right? But depending on the structure of the crystallization, oh, the hardness and structure are completely different. So you're saying normal water and this ice nine are like that? Yep. Have you heard the story about the crystallization of glycerin? For 150 years after the discovery of glycerin, people cooled it, warmed it, 
They did all sorts of things to it, but whatever they did, it never crystallized. However, one day in 1920, some glycerin on its way to England by ship was discovered to have crystallized during the trip. Scientists around the world wanted to research this new, crystallized form of glycerin and asked for seeds. Oh, a seed is a sample of the original crystallized substance. With a seed crystal, further crystallization of glycerin would be easy. However, something very strange happened. Not only did the glycerin encouraged by seed crystals begin to crystallize, even the samples nearby did, even though they were tightly sealed. And it didn't end there. After that day, it doesn't matter where in the world it is, all glycerin crystallizes naturally when cooled to less than 64 degrees. Before that day, no matter how glycerin was cooled, it refused to crystallize. But once the crystallization had begun, it was almost like... How do I put it? It was almost like all the glycerin in the world was communicating. Communicating in some way that we can't sense. And now it's happening everywhere. Wow, that's, that's pretty interesting. But, uh, what does that have to do with Ice-9? What she's saying is that it's a lot like Ice-9. What happened, I mean. A lot like? Oh, that would be bad. If water everywhere started freezing at 96 degrees, man, it'd be the end of the world. <sighs> at any rate, we're not gonna have to worry about the end of the world unless we can get out of here pretty damn quick. All right, guys. I think that's enough of that. I didn't think we'd get quite this far off topic. I mean, I know I'm kind of at fault here, but we can't be screwing around anymore. So seriously, I might go by the name Santa right now, but I didn't grow up in Iceland. I freaking hate the cold. So let's get cracking, all right? We gotta find a way out of here. Selfish, isn't he? Ice Nine is interesting and all, but we can discuss it more once we get out of this freezer. Okay. So, I think now that had solidified my choice uh, for a different ending, which I think has to be here. So, what I think I'm supposed to do is that I'm supposed to go through door seven. And the, this path that I'm doing is going to give me either one of two endings. Uh, either it's going to give me one known as the coffin ending, or it's going to give me the true ending. I don't really know if I got the criteria for the true ending, but I think I might have. If it's the true ending, then, you know, it's the true ending. There you go. <laughs> but uh, we'll see. So, I think we gotta go to the operating room. Alright, now whether we have to actually uh, do the full puzzle again, I don't know. And I hope we don't. But we'll just kinda skim through some of this stuff, cause I I understand what I'm trying to do. Basically, we need to talk to Seven and Clover and make a choice that we otherwise wouldn't have been able to do until now. So, I'll get back to you guys once I figure everything out. You think we should go back? Yeah, I think that's probably best. Hmm? Hey, Seven, what's up? Oh! Well, is, is that a medicine bottle? I got curious about it. Here. Ethylene diamine tartrate? Yeah, that's right. CDT. What kind of medicine is that? It's not medicine. I think it's an industrial strength detergent. Why would they have something like that here? Well, probably to clean stuff up. Clean what up? Fuck if I know. Still, it looks like it's cleaned my brain up. You remember something? Yeah. Well, I remember a story about EDT. Happened about 50 years ago. There was this factory somewhere in America making big old EDT crystals. <laughs> they were making it to sell as an industrial strength cleaner. Like I told you before. But... 
a year after the factory started up, something strange started happening with the crystals they were building. The water molecules started attaching themselves to the EDT crystals. This made them into a sort of mutation of the original crystals, called a hydrate. Once the crystals turn into a hydrate, though, it's useless as a cleaner. The factory had to just dump the crystals. As a hydrate, they were useless. But it didn't end there. After that day, the same thing started happening in EDT factories everywhere. Even ones nowhere near that first American factory. They'd been making crystals the same way, with the same materials and the same equipment and environment. But now, all of a sudden, every single crystal they formed turned into a hydrate. In fact, ever since that day, no factory anywhere has been able to make a pure EDT crystal. Even in EDT research done years before, they'd never gotten a hydrate. But after it happened at the first factory, it just... spread. It was like... man, how do you say it? Like the molecules were communicating with one another, transmitting information in a way humans couldn't perceive. This phenomena spread throughout the world, right? Yeah, that's... that's it exactly. But how did you know? I heard another story, uh, kind of like that one. When? In the freezer. What? The freezer? Yeah, June told me. Hmm. Ice that doesn't melt at room temperature, huh? That sounds familiar? Yeah, hold up. I, I feel like I can remember something. It's right there. Do you? Do you know about Ice Nine? Ice Nine? Ice Nine. Ice Nine. Ice, ice, ice. That's it. I remember now. That woman, she's on this boat. That woman? Alice! In Wonderland? Who's Alice? Come on, the woman who won't melt at room temperature! Wait, what? Huh? You know how the Titanic sank on April 15th, 1912, right? Yeah, more than 1,500 people died. Worst maritime accident in history. What about it? Did you hear about the boat that was sent to collect the dead bodies? What? Uh, I think that was the RMS Carpathia, right? It was a cruise liner, just like the Titanic. Really? No, that was the ship that picked up the survivors. The ship that collected the dead bodies was the C.S. McKay Bennett. The McKay Bennett showed up on April 17th, two days after the accident. It set out from Halifax, a port in Canada, and recovered 306 bodies. Jesus. The Atlantic that far north was really cold. It would have to be for there to be icebergs and stuff. Anyway, the bodies they pulled out of the water were frozen solid. This isn't a very nice story. So, what happened next? Well, they say the McKay Bennett recovered something more than just dead bodies. Keep going. There were various bits of stuff floating around in the water. Things the drowned had carried with them, or stuff that dislodged as the ship sank. One of the things they found was a coffin. A coffin? Yeah, a wooden one. The craftsman who made it must have been pretty skilled. It wasn't just a wooden coffin. It was all wood, no nails, no reinforcements, no gaps in the wood anywhere. The thing was airtight. The hell? The crew got pretty curious about what might be inside it and opened it up. They had to get a wedge and hammer it open. It was so well made. Inside. They found a woman. Or, I guess you should say, they found the dead body of a woman. Wait a minute. She looks very familiar. Her hair was thick and black, and her skin rich brown with no blemishes or signs of decomposition. They say that she looked gorgeous, like a goddess. She was obviously dead, but everyone who looked at her said she just looked like she was sleeping. Her skin was so lifelike, she looked like she might wake up any minute. She didn't. Like the rest of the bodies they found, she was frozen solid. Eventually, the McKay Bennett finished searching and returned to Halifax. The 306 bodies were unloaded and taken ashore. However, it was warm enough that they began to thaw. They say that the stink was horrible. But there was one body that didn't thaw. And that was... The girl in the coffin. That's right. Everybody thought for sure that she'd melt and start to rot like the rest of them eventually. But weeks passed and nothing happened. And a month passed. And another. It was summer, and she was still frozen solid. After a while, people started to say she was some sort of miracle. Rumors about her started to spread. People came to visit Halifax from all over. 
After a while, people started to call her All Ice. Haha, <laughs> gotcha. Alice. Of course, those rumors didn't last long. Why? Well, she up and disappeared. One day Alice was there, the next day she wasn't. They say someone snuck into where they were keeping her and stole the body. With the body gone, the rumors followed pretty quickly. After a while, no one remembered her. You might be able to find something about her if you could find a newspaper from back then, but that's about it. Wait, you just said that she was on this boat. Yeah, I did. Alice has got to be somewhere on this ship. Now why the hell would you say something like that? Because I know. Uh-huh. And just what is it you know? What happened to Alice after she was stolen? All right. Tell me. What happened to Alice? <laughs> That's confidential. Well, at that time, the word was that there was a special black market in New York. All millionaires from all over the world. I've heard that Alice went up for auction there. The person who won the auction was Lord Dashiell Gordain. Really? The guy who's, who made the gigantic. You've heard that name before, right? Lord Gordain. Oh, isn't he the guy who bought the gigantic? The Titanic sister ship? Yeah, that's him. Although, I guess he hadn't done that yet. What do you mean? Gordain bought Alice in 1912. Four years later, in 1916, he bought the gigantic. Oh. And he hit Alice somewhere on the gigantic. But nobody knows where. He died in 1931. And apparently, he died without ever telling anyone where Alice was hidden. However... However... what? Well, he did have one close friend who asked him, where is Alice? And he said, Alice sleeps in a small chamber past the Forest of Knowledge beneath the navel of the Gigantic. Forest of Knowledge? What the hell is that? Is it some kind of riddle? Your guess is as good as mine. So that's it. Whatever you think, I believe it. She's hidden somewhere on the Gigantic. In other words, she's hidden somewhere on this ship. Hmm... Over there stop wasting time and get over here okay okay we're coming jeez yeah so anyway that's the story it might be useful someday don't forget it alice huh that mummy, that mummy wasn't, wasn't just, just a normal, normal mummy. mummy oh so that's what she was talking about they say that she was frozen the story says that from the time of its discovery all the way through to when it got put on the Titanic. Even though it was carried through the desert, her body never melted. Then was that Egyptian priestess, Alice? It must have been. Did the water in her body become Ice Nine? No, that, that's nuts. There's no way somebody like that could exist. Huh. Wow. Alright, then we're getting somewhere. Alright. Um, next conversation that should pop up should be Clover. But again, I'll uh, jump to it when we get to it. Hey, hold on. Oh, uh, what's up? Where's Clover? Huh? Oh, god damn it. Where the hell did she go? Uh, okay, j just hold on a minute. I'll go get her. Sure thing. Hey, Clover, what's wrong? Come on, let's get out of here. What are you doing? Did you want to come back here and say goodbye to John? Hey, Clover, can you hear me? My brother might be dead. Uh huh? That's why we couldn't find him. If he's dead, I'm going to be next. What, what are you talking about? What's wrong with you? Oh, yeah. It's in my pocket somewhere. Um, ah, here it is. A four-leaf clover. Hey, did you know? Each leaf means something. Hope, faith, love, and luck. That's what a four-leaf clover stands for. Take it. Use it as a good luck charm. Listen to me, clover. No matter what happens, you can never lose hope. You have to remember what's most important, and that's to have faith and to have love. If you can remember all of those, that'll bring you good luck. Snake, I mean, your brother. 
He's not dead. He's alive, somewhere. I, I'm sure of it. You've just got to believe in that. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Now come on. Seven's waiting for us at the exit. Wait. Before we go, there's one thing I want to ask you. What's that? What do you think when you hear the word experiment? Experiment? Uh, what? Oh. Uh, I guess it was just a coincidence then. I mean, that you knew about the four-leaf clover. Uh, look, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, I, I don't want to be a jerk, but you are making less than no sense right now. Oh, no, 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 it's nothing. Just forget about it. Oh, don't, don't give me that. Uh, you really think I could just drop this? What is this experiment you were talking about? You promise you won't tell anyone? Cross my heart. Really? Really. I can trust you, right? Of course you can. Okay then, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what happened on this ship nine years ago. Huh. Wait, wait, wait. Y on this ship? Yeah, this ship. It was an experiment to test some sort of psychic thing. Right. Communicating through these fields that you can't see. Fields that you can't see? Like, think about this. This is John, right? But, is he really John? Huh? Isn't this like Locke's socks? Locke's socks? Or the ship of Theseus? I've heard that term, I don't know what that one means though. Um... You don't know? You haven't heard of those paradoxes? No? Really? Okay, well pay attention then. This is how Locke's socks works. Let's say I've got a pair of socks. They're my favorite socks. One of them gets a hole in it. What would you do if that was your sock, Junpei? Uh, probably patch it up. Well, I, I guess I'd patch it up, get some cloth, and close up the hole. But what if another hole opens? I'd add another patch, I suppose. What if another hole opened after that? Um, another patch, I guess? Well, let's say you just keep adding new patches. Until eventually, the original cloth of the sock is totally gone. Once you get to that point... Mm. Can you really say they're the same socks you started with? That's true. Hmm. Uh, well, that... Hmm, that's... Oh, that, that's tough. It's kind of a lot, a lot like that one character from, uh, Nier Automata. The one that, um... Uh... Still has, um his original leg or something like that, but the other one's a bum leg or something. Anyways. So, that's the lock socks thing? Yeah. The ship of Theseus is a lot like it. The ship of Theseus. If you keep fixing the damaged parts of a ship... Yeah, I've heard of this one. That's right. Eventually, it ends up with none of the parts it started with. Yeah. Can you really say that ship is the same one you started with? And what if you took all the old parts from the first ship and built another one somewhere else? Then which ship is the real ship of Theseus? The one you repaired, or the one you built with all the original parts? Hmm. Hey, do you think it's the same? What's the same? These guys. Is this John, or is it Lucy now? Uh, huh. John's head and heart are both his, but apart from those and a single arm, the rest of his body was once Lucy's. We're just like these mannequins. Think about it. The cells in our body change every day. Old ones die and new ones are born. Yeah, that's right. I've heard that, like, that idea as well. Like, since all of our, like, Practically all of our cells have already died from when we were born to where we are now. So, are we really the same person that we were before? That type of deal. Maybe part of my arm is made of stuff from a fish I ate once. Or maybe part of your right side is made from a cow you ate. Now that, I haven't heard, but I, I guess that kind of makes sense. If you take it a little further, those cows and fishes are made from something else too, right? That's how we're all connected. Through fields that can't be seen with the naked eye. Man, that's so trippy. That's so weird. That's really interesting.
Hey, what the hell has taken you two so long? I was listening to the story time, I'm sorry. How long are you gonna make me wait? Uh, all day? We don't have time to screw around. I mean, as long as we're in this, uh, this game, we have a limited time. <sighs> I'm sorry. Uh oh? What were you two doing? Was this some sort of secret meeting? Yeah, no girls allowed. Heh. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. No, it wasn't. We were just... Just... Playing. With the mannequins. Huh? <laughs> we were playing house. <laughs> Let's go, Junpei. Playing with mannequins, huh? Yeah, you got a problem with that? You were the one who was fetishizing about them the first time we came here. I remember. Did I remember. into that kind of thing, Junpei. <laughs> <sighs> You're a dick. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Alright, I'm gonna open it now. Is that cool? You don't need to keep asking, just do it, alright? <sighs> Fine then. <sighs> alright, let's get going. Hey man, what's up with you? You're so serious, you know? Can't you sound more happy, you know, get a little excited? <sighs> <sighs> Not really. My brother might be dead. I'm going to be next. Like hell I can. Not after hearing something like that. Okay, so... Back to here. From what I understand now... Is that we are supposed to go through... Uh, door number one. Now, I'm not seeing if there's like a specific thing we are supposed to do during this, or if it's just, you know, go here, or what. So, again, I'm gonna try and see what I can do, and we'll uh, jump to anything new. Be right back all right so we're back here at uh, this path for door five right here so I didn't understand this about the game of how the paths kind of work but now I kind of get it um, the bars in between the paths light up to indicate where you are so the reason why um, my endings weren't working was because I did not have the right sides line uh, lit up so what I need to do right now is that I'm back here and oops, what I need to do is I've already completed the puzzle I just need to remember to indicate the safe like we did the first time we played this all right so now that we have that now it's time to get the proper path Pocket watch. Might I take yeah. a look at it? Yeah, there is. You checked on us. Now get out of here. We split this stuff up for a reason, all right? That's a lie. We didn't have to split up the work. I just want to talk to Clover alone. That's why I sent Ace to the wheelhouse. There's something I want to ask her. I don't want anyone to overhear us. I'm pretty sure Clover won't talk if there's anyone else around. That's why when Ace showed up again, I got a little desperate. I had to make him leave. Oh, I see, of course. I apologize for the intrusion. 
Well, best of luck. <sighs> what was that about? Why are you looking at me like that? Oh, uh, no, 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 it's not like that. What's it like then? I just wanted to hear the rest of that story. I didn't get a chance to ask you about it until now. What story? About the experiment, remember? The one you started to tell me in the operating room? You said something about an experiment that happened here nine years ago. Okay, I think I finally got it. <laughs> if you look at the top left, I've been here for over an hour, almost two hours, trying to figure out everything. I don't know what this video is going to look like <laughs> by the end of it. Um... Well, I can't uh, go back, but... Okay, so I've been trying to figure everything out properly, and now I finally figured out the solution. Now, I did do uh, this path prior, the uh, door 4, 7, and 1. Now, the thing was, was that I did it, but I got the axe ending again. And the reason being is because I didn't come back to... Um, the one path because there was two um, like locked key symbols or something though it, it never told me I had to do anything about it at least like the guide I'm looking at but now I get it so with the information that I gathered from going from all the various uh, paths and specifically, like, I had to replay uh, and choose, um, like, uh, the the Lucky Charm and, and uh, the Ice Nine and all that stuff. I had to do all that stuff again to get where I'm at now. And now, I can finally tuck the Clover again. And hopefully, because it looks like it's going to give me another choice, because it didn't do that beforehand, like the first time we went through this area. So now, we can hopefully finally get the true ending. Or, well, I think we'll get the safe, yeah, we, we'll, we'll get the safe ending first. And then, we can try to get the true ending. And then I'll probably be done with the game at that point. Because um, I don't really know if there's a reason to get the other endings. I, don't, I really don't know. Anyways, sorry for the long-winded explanations that's been going on. I'm pretty sure there's, I'm pretty sure it's a lot of just long-winded explanations uh, throughout most of this video, because uh, there's, there was so much back and forth. There's a lot of things I had to cut out. So you know, here you go. I'm sorry, but I don't want to talk about that right now. I'm just not in the mood. Okay. Uh. You understand, right? I'm just... I keep thinking about my brother. I... I can't stop. I mean, who would do something like that? To my brother? <sighs> I can't forgive them. I'm not gonna let them get away with it. They're gonna pay for it. I promise. So... So... Junpei, who do you think did it? Well, if what Seven said was right, then there would have to be at least two of them. You need at least three people to open the numbered doors, and if you subtract Snake, that means there were at least two other people. You're right. So, what does that mean? Well, if we just look at the bracelet numbers, we should be able to figure it out. Who could have opened door three with Snake? Well, really, who and who, or who, who, and who? You mean it could have been four people? That's also true. Well, technically, it's possible. Um, I don't know. That doesn't seem very likely. Why? Um, I'll tell you later. Huh. Why don't we just assume it was only two other people for now? Okay, uh, got it. Let's do that then. Then who do you think it could be? Which two bracelets number added to two would give a digital root of three? Oh my god! <laughs> oh no! I don't know! 
Huh? Uh, digital root of three, which two bracelet numbers? What is it doing? Oh, that was weird. I don't know why I did that. Anyways, I don't know how the digital root thing do, so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna look for it. I'll be right back. I'm gonna, oh man. I'm really tempted to look it up, but at the same time, I wanna give my own input of like who I think it could be. Plus, I don't know if the choice actually matters. Because I feel like it's one of those ones that they'll just give you the answer, give the answer what Clover actually thinks it is. And that's probably gonna be correct. Uh, um, so I see a lot of Ace. Well, actually, now that I think about it, Ace and Lotus have. Yeah, that's right. Ace and Lotus have been the most suspicious. Let me tell you why. Because at the axe ending, Ace talks to Lotus, wanting to talk, or, or, yeah, they want to talk together whenever everyone else leaves the room, leaving only Junpei behind. He's telling her, hey, I want to show you something. And, you know, uh, Junpei's like, hey, wh wh why, why not me? What, am I chopped beef or something, you know? Uh, or, yeah, you know the saying, anyways. Um, so, he wants Lotus and him to be alone for some reason. Not only that, but Lotus always gets her bracelet stolen when she dies. There was two specific points where she dies and specifically her br bracelet is stolen. And Ace has been a little sus with certain things. So, I'm gonna go with Ace and Lotus. Would it be Ace and Lotus? The digital root for Snake, Ace, and Lotus is two. That's definitely not three. They wouldn't be able to open the door. Then which two could? Oh, uh, okay. Uh... I don't know, let's just... Yeah. <laughs> Would it be Ace and Santa? The digital root for Snake, Ace, and Santa is... No, they wouldn't be able... Then maybe... Ace and... J the digital root for Snake, Ace, and June is... Nine! Nope. They couldn't... Besides, there's no way in hell June is a murderer. Damn. I need to think it over again. Would it be Ace and Seven? The digital root for Snake, Ace, and Seven... The numbers aren't the right ones. They wouldn't be able to open door... But in that case... I really wrong. Okay. Would it be Santa and June? The digital root for Snake, Santa, and June is two. Nope. They, besides, there's no way in hell June is a murder. <sighs> what am I doing? We're just gonna go for the list. I don't care. Would it be Santa and Seven? The digital root for Snake, Santa, and Seven oh. is three. Oh shit. Wait, hold on. Huh? Are Santa and Seven the killers? I really don't think they are. Huh. <sighs> I mean, the only sus one would be, <clears throat> well, well, I don't know, because I mean, of course, again, uh, Seven lost his memories, but we know that he's a cop, so why would he want to murder? And with Santa, I mean, he's got a a sister. So maybe he has more of a motive, if anything, but I wouldn't see him as a killer, I don't know. What's wrong? Well, I thought about it, and... That's what I thought. Santa and Seven. If it was two people, then that's the only combination that works. Hey, wait a minute there. Don't you think it's a little too early to be jumping to conclusions? Well, all I said is that those two would have been able to open door three with your brother. 
There might be other possibilities. Well, what other possibility? Uh, um... Are you saying you think that it was three or four people? You really don't think that's likely. Why not? Can I borrow your pen and paper? Yeah, here. Slowly but surely we are getting somewhere. What's this? Oh shit. These are the combinations for three or four people. These eight combinations are the only possible ones. Oh, I see. Junpei? Yeah? I... I can trust you, right? Of course. Why would you need to ask that? Really? Yeah. So then I should get rid of B, D, G, and H, right? Of course. Just cross them out. And you should take off yours too. The ones with four. So, what does that leave? A and E. So, Ace and... Oh, who's three? Wait, it can't be A. Why? Because June's in that one. Huh. There's no way in hell she'd do something like that. You don't know that. You were only elementary school friends. You don't know anything about her. What her life is now. Are you sure? I didn't even think about June. Because it kept, like, disregarding her. She's gotta be it. She's gotta be a part of this. Because I still... Am not... Wait, 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 wait. Who's, um... No. So wait, who was six? I don't remember. I bet my life on it. Okay then. I can I cross know. off A too, right? Yeah. I don't know. I really don't. Well, what have we got left? E. Fuck. Do you know what this means? Yeah, so Lotus. Yeah, Lotus is in that one. Lotus is eight. But seven? So they're saying Ace? Uh, damn it. There's three. Uh. Everyone besides me, you, and June would be working together. Do you think that's likely? Hmm. If there were four people working together, they wouldn't be very cautious. I don't think they'd try that hard to hide what they were doing if they outnumbered us, right? I mean, I guess you're right, but still. Well, you do have a point. And besides, if Ace and Seven are working together, they could have easily gotten rid of me when I went to the shower room with them. That's true. But they didn't. They didn't even try anything. And anyways, why, why Snake? What did, what did Snake do? Why would they want to take him out? If they were killers, why wouldn't they? Oh, I see. Anyway, I understand now. It seems pretty unlikely that it was as many as three or four people. Yeah. Then that means there's a good chance it was Santa and Seven. That's how it looks. But why would they do it? Their motive. Have I interrupted something? No, not at all. Uh, go back to, uh... Go back, go back to the, the ship, Captain thing, the, the wheel. That's the puzzle we're doing, right? Uh, uh, what is it? There was something I wanted to speak with you about, Junpei. Could you come with me for a moment? Don't, don't kill me, please. I'm, I really sus go about ahead. you. Okay. What did you want to talk about? Oh boy. There was something I wanted to check. Mate? Yeah? What's that? If you'll excuse me. Hey! What, what the what? hell are you doing? Oh, the... the pocket watch, I'm that's just right. Checking. No, 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 stop! <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, just checking. Uh, <laughs> Did you just touch me? Down there? <laughs> you... Don't... don't ever touch me again, please. Just as I thought. What exactly are these pieces of paper hiding in your pocket? Oh, that's right. Okay, that's... Yeah, that's the uh, the names. 
or the numbers uh, or whatever. You switched them, didn't you, when we voted? Yeah, okay, um, okay. Uh, well, I can't say that I care. I managed to get through the numbered door I wanted, despite your mischief. And again, so why does he want to go for this door? He specifically wanted to go for this door, too. What's at the end of... It's not letting me do it. I'm trying to remember what was the... I don't know. What could he wanted out of this room? Here. Why did you... Oh, simple curiosity. I hope you won't think ill of me for it. Uh, uh, damn. Okay. Yep. That worked. We got the key. So that means we need to get to the captain's quarters. So that means we have to do these two and get the right choices here, I assume. We're finally getting it. Oh Looks man, like this gets me excited. Because I've been at this for, as you can see, two hours. <laughs> two hours and 11 minutes. I've been at this for a while. Oh, I am dreading editing this video very much, but I am excited to finally get to the ending of this. Because I, yeah. A-L-L-I-C-E. Oh, that's where we... Yeah, that's right. I knew that we heard all ice from somewhere. But I couldn't remember where it was. All ice. Alice. Yeah. What does this mean? Yep. What the hell is Hier this? That's right, the hieroglyphics. They are hieroglyphs. A form of writing used in ancient Egypt. Ancient Egypt? That's right. Can you read them? Of course. I can't. What would make you think I could? What the hell? Whoa, the, the whole thing's like that. Huh? What's this? Oh, a, a keycard. Uranus. That's the Uranus symbol. Something's written on the bottom. Bottom deck library. This must be the key to the library, then. So it would seem. Bottom deck library. Oh. Seven said something like... Alice yeah. sleeps in a small chamber past the forest of knowledge beneath the navel of the gigantic. Oh shit. Could beneath the navel mean the bottom deck? And the forest of knowledge is the library? Then could Alice be in a room somewhere beyond the library? What's wrong? Something on your mind? A little bit. Um, yeah. I just remembered something. Is that so? What about? Well, don't laugh, okay? The Egyptian Priestess and Ice Nine. Interesting. And the woman who wouldn't melt, who was recovered from the Titanic disaster? They called her All Ice, which eventually turned into Alice. And she was purchased by an English millionaire who called himself Lord Gordain. According to Seven, this ship is where he hid Alice. And you think that he hid her in a small room, beyond the library on the bottom deck? Yeah. Well, I mean, it is just a theory. A game theory! Sorry, I had to do it. Hmm. Junpei, have you ever heard of the term Cass? Cassidy. Cage. Cass? It stands for Cells Alive System. It is an advanced technology for freezing and preserving organic matter. Huh. Put simply, it is a technique that allows one to freeze things without the formation of ice crystals. So like cryostasis. Normally, if you freeze something fresh, water within its cells expands as it crystallizes, damaging the cell membrane. Cass, however, works differently. The object to be frozen is supercooled using magnetic fields, and then frozen instantly and uniformly, giving ice crystals no time to form. Oh. It was originally developed for the preservation of food, as an alternative to the normal freezing process. Now, however, there are rumors that it can be used for other things. What do you mean, other things? Well, there are obvious medical uses, but perhaps also space travel. Yep. Cryostasis. Space travel? Are you serious? Surely you've heard of suspended animation. Cryogenic freezing? It's a fairly common idea in science fiction books and films. Yep. People are sometimes frozen for especially lengthy journeys through space. Whoa, 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 wait a minute there. 
Are you saying that Alice was frozen using that cast thing? And she was sent to space and sent back here. Of course! Well, I'm sure the possibility is quite low, but it is a possibility. If this special ice you call Ice-9 does indeed exist, and casts were used to freeze her into that sort of ice instantaneously. You think she could be alive? Probably. Well, I can't say for sure, of course. I'm only talking about possibilities. The melting point for Ice-9 is 96 degrees, right? If she were put somewhere where she could reach that temperature... <laughs> That's nuts! Are you really saying she could have defrosted and started walking about? You're quite right. It does sound unbelievable. But if she had, then we would have an explanation for the man we found dead on the floor. Wait, we would? You mean the guy dressed like a captain? Yeah, Zero? The one that had the Zero bracelet? Yes. He was dead when we found him. Clearly, he was murdered. <laughs> Clover's face. <laughs> but if he was murdered, then by whom? It couldn't have been one of us. That would be impossible. In order to enter the captain's quarters, one must first open door one. That door that requires the earth key prevented us from accessing door one. Who was it that opened that door? Santa and Lotus. Right. Clearly, the two of them could not have opened door one, or any other door for that matter. Who else then could have done so? Nobody. After Santa and Lotus used the Earth Key, they turned back and met up with me in June. Then, we returned to the large hospital room and found Ace, Seven, and Clover. While we'd gone into the shower room, Ace, Seven, and Clover had stayed behind. But it's impossible for those three to open door one. No, but what about when June and I took the elevator to door two? No, still won't work. We were only gone five minutes. No human being could have run to the captain's quarters, killed that guy in there, and run back that fast. Unless he was the Flash. Barry Allen must be the killer. It makes a lot of sense when you think about it. It would be <clears throat> impossible for any of us to be the murderer. That being the case, who could have killed him? Wouldn't it make sense if his killer was someone who had been in the ship for some time? <sighs> a person like that would know the ship well. They would know the locations of all the hidden passages and secret doors. The numbered door would mean nothing to someone like that. It would be a simple thing for them to enter the captain's quarters. Then you're saying the killer was Alice? Well, this is all only one possible theory. All ice, Alice. Is she really somewhere on the ship? Maybe this card will give me access to the Forest of Knowledge, and the big mystery. What could be there beyond the Forest of Knowledge? Anyway, whatever. It's gonna have to wait. I can't do anything right now. I'll come back to this later. Alright. One more key. Huh. Z-E-R-O, huh. It's like he's making fun of us. What do you think? Nothing. What about him? Do you think that's really Zero? There's no way that's him. Didn't I tell you already? Zero is one of us. Yeah, right. Well, even if he wasn't one of us, there's no way that man could be Zero. Uh-huh. Don't you get it? The letters that spell Zero on the TV screen, the captain's clothes he's got on, and of course, the bracelet with a Zero on it. It's too obvious! Look, look, this is Zero right here! This dead body is Zero! Isn't that kind of fishy? You're right. Only an idiot wouldn't see through something like that. No, that, that's not the point. So I'm not trying to make fun of them for thinking a trick like this would work. I'm sure they didn't think it would work. Which makes me wonder... Why did they do it? <laughs> I guess you forgot to do that line. I think this is a challenge. A challenge from the person who's really behind all of this. He's making fun of us. <laughs> Don't you get it? If whoever killed this guy really wanted us to think this corpse was Zero, they'd never have put a bracelet on him. Walking around with a Zero bracelet would be like hanging a sign around your neck that said, I did it! Anyone with a brain would be able to see that this guy is supposed to look like everything Zero is supposed to be. 
Just like we did. Uh. The killer must have known we wouldn't think he was Zero and put the bracelet on him anyway. Do you know why? Why? Like I said, he's mocking us. Too bad, suckers. This isn't Zero. Where's the real me, then? See if you can catch me. It's the same bad joke a lot of criminals like to play. They'll just sit back and watch <coughs> people run in circles. That's really twisted. But it almost seems kind of childish. Yeah, you're right. It's really childish. It's like it's just a game to whoever this person is. That's what seems funny to me. All right, let's get back to the point. Who killed this man? I don't know. And what's this guy's deal? Who is he? How would I know that? If I knew anything, I would have told you. You have no idea who he is. Why would I? Hmm. We should check and see if he's got anything on him that might tell us who he is. Why didn't we do this before? Seriously. Give me a hand here, Clover. Huh? We gotta flip him over. How else are we gonna search his pockets? The... Why in the world did we never get a choice about that before? It just seems like an obvious thing that if there is something in this room that is suspicious, we need to check it. Why did we not get the choice to do this? Ah, uh, whatever. Anyways, let's go. Okay, fine. Guess I'll do it. Here we go. Huh? Hey, it's the... Huh? Lastly, left discusses how to remove the bracelets. There are only two ways to do so. One, you escape from this ship. Two, more hardly, which is zero. In other words, once the bracelet is taken outside the convoy of the ship, or the bags that have been married has fallen to zero, Oh god, this man, he's dead, isn't he? Jinpei. Jinpei, buddy. We need to talk. <laughs> How in the world did you think he was alive? You know what? They're they're trying to be dramatic. Just just go with it. Huh? <clears throat> no, it's just I I guess I didn't really think about it until right now. Uh, whatever. <laughs> if his bracelet's off, that means he's dead. Yes. Yes, it does. Well, it's pretty obvious that he's dead. You don't really need to look at his bracelet to figure out that he's dead. Very much so. Good job, Clover. Points for you. Also, why did we never take the fucking bracelet before? It can still be used, I I think. I don't know. No one ever tried. That could have really helped out a lot, honestly. Probably. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess you're right. It is pretty obvious. Well, uh, <coughs> he looks a lot better than the other bodies we've seen, though. You know? Well, actually, now I think about it, probably wouldn't work very much because... There's a roots need to be added, so you can't really add anything to zero, so I guess yeah, I, I'm the one who looks like a fool now. I mean if, if there wasn't all this blood, he almost looked like he was still alive. <laughs> I mean, I know it's kind of a messed up thing to say, but he kinda has it better, you know? Dying from a bomb going off inside of you. I mean, that's just... Some of Snake's bones went right through his skin. I, I think the explosion must have thrown him against a wall or something. There was a broken bone just sticking out of his left arm. And... Uh, oh. Why would you describe this, dude? Come on. She's right there. What did you just say? What? Oh, man. Uh, I am... I, I am so sorry. I, I shouldn't have said Junpei. that. Junpei. I really don't know what I was- No, that's not what I'm talking about. What? What did you say about his arm? Wait, what? A uh, arm? Yes, his left arm. You said it, didn't you? Well, yeah, I did, but... I mean, I didn't... Didn't you see it too? Of course not. I could barely look at him. There's no way I was gonna see the details. Are you sure it was his left arm? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was. And he had a broken bone, right? What the hell are you getting at here? Just shut up and answer me! Yeah, he did. Uh, it was pretty bad, too. The bone was sticking out of the arm. <laughs> Clover? 
What's wrong? Uh, Look, I'm sorry if I said anything. Thank you. That's not Snake, is it? Is that what she's referring to? Huh? What are you... They did say he was an ex... Did she, she did mention something about an experiment. Maybe he's not human? Huh. Thank you so much, Junpei. Hey, uh, what's going on with you? <clears throat> Sorry, it's just... I'm so happy! Why? The body in the shower room... It, it isn't his! It isn't my brother! So he's... Is he not human? Is that what she's referring to, then? Huh? It's not Snake! Why on earth would you think that? Because his left arm is... I'm sorry. I really shouldn't be talking about this. Uh. But he's still alive. That's right. He had gloves on. He had gloves on. We couldn't see his skin. The only thing we could see was his head, so maybe he had a fake left arm. I'm, I'm maybe so that's happy. what she was referring to. I'm so glad. Uh-huh. Junpei, you were right! Huh? No matter what happens, you can never lose hope. You have to remember what's most important, and that's to have faith and to have love. If you can remember all of those, that'll bring you good luck. Uh, that's... I, I only made it here because you gave me this. I was suspicious of everybody, and I was angry and miserable. But because I had this four-leaf clover, because of what you said to me... Yeah. Thank you so much, Junpei. Oh, uh, if you really want to thank somebody, you, you should be thanking Santa. Santa? Why? Well, he was the one who gave me that thing. And the words for each leaf, I got that from him too. <coughs> oh. Um... Uh... Uh... Huh? Huh? going on <laughs> did, <laughs> did Santa really tell you those things what is she getting at yeah he, he did did I uh, say something wrong oh no not at all in fact <clears throat> it's gonna be really good news I think you think Santa knew about the words and the clover. The only people who should know about that are the other subjects. Wait a minute. So, are all these... So, wait a minute. Does, does that mean that... These were the, the, the kids that... Seven was looking for? Subjects. The other people who were in the experiment nine years ago, with my brother <clears> and <throat> me. <sighs> but he's blind, and I was part of the Nevada test group. Nevada? So neither of us would be able to recognize the faces of the people who were on this boat. Whoa, 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 okay, time out. Let's just calm down for a second, okay? Start from the top. Don't start with the end and then jump to the middle. You, you, you gotta start with one and then move to two. Okay, we get it. Just, four. just if you don't go. Tell me stuff in the right order, I'm never gonna be able to figure it out. Yeah, me either. Okay. <laughs> All right. Perf Let's start with this experiment. What happened on this boat nine years ago? Do you know about morphogenetic fields? Morphogenetic fields? All right. How about, How about this? this? Theory, Theory of the, of the telepathic, telepathic mechanism. mechanism. I think Lotus mentioned something like that. Hmm. Telepathy, huh? Well, that's not really it, but I suppose it's similar. So they were testing telepathy on this ship? Yeah, I guess so. So, what exactly did they have you guys do? The same thing that we're doing now. Exactly the same thing. What? The Nonary Game. Nine people were put on this boat, and nine others were put in the building in Nevada, and the game started. Look, I'm sorry, but I, I don't get it. What do the nonary game and some telepathy experiment have to do with each other? Am I missing something here? 
The ability to access a morphogenetic field is affected by a couple of things. The first is epiphany, and the other is danger. You know how sometimes when you're up against a really tough problem, and then the answer just kind of pops in your head? That's an epiphany. And what you learn from the epiphany can be transmitted with telepathy. When you add danger to that equation, then it gets easier to transmit that information over telepathy. So you're saying the Nonary game was supposed to introduce that element of danger? Yeah, but it couldn't be just any old danger. It had to be life and death. And someone did actually die. A girl. Huh. She was on the boat with my brother. I was in Nevada. I never met her, but I did hear her name. Oh. Her name was... <sighs> Alice? Maybe? Oh, my apologies. I seem to have disturbed you. Ace, you two must have strong stomachs. I can't imagine how you could stay in this room for so long. At any rate, Junpei, would you be so kind as to come and help me with something? Oh boy, we're gonna hurt getting somewhere. I'm having a little trouble and I could really use your assistance. Uh... Come on, it'll only take a moment. I don't want Ace to hear us. We can talk about this later. Huh? Hey, wait! Junpei? What are you doing in there? Hurry up! <sighs> so now... We finally... Unlocked this ending! Now, I... From what I understand, I think this is the safe ending. Referring to the safe from the beginning of the game. And then we can hopefully get the true ending very soon. All right, let's go. That's the next door. Wait, a piece of paper. This is map of the ship's interior for a deck. <laughs> What's wrong? I found a map for this floor. I see. Well, that was anticlimactic. I should keep this, though. Hey, uh, where's Clover? Damn it. What the hell is she up to? Clover! Huh? Huh? Uh, what the hell are you doing? Nothing. What do you mean, nothing? What the hell is that? What? You've got something in your pocket. What is it? Oh, this? Uh... Um, this is... a note. A note? Yeah, I found it in the pocket of the guy with the captain's clothes. It said something about the darkness of the sinister hand or something. What the hell? Uh, let me see it. Uh, no, not right... Hey, Junpei, Clover! What are you two doing? Hurry up! He's getting mad. I'll show it to you later, alright? Come on, we gotta hurry. Yay, she won't kill us. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> I was kind of scared once I saw him inspecting her pocket because I thought, like, oh no, she's. Did I get the wrong ending again? Is she gonna murder me? <laughs> the look of that pocket. It doesn't particularly look like just a note. Jeez, what are you thinking? Ah, for crying out loud. You didn't mention a stick on her back, so there's no axe in her hand. Oh boy. The big stairs. Huh. So this is where it ends up. Just like it says on the map. Ace, did he head down? Oh, there he is. Look! The four others are there too! Really? Let's join them! Jumpy! Clo- What's up? We found it! Found what? We found it! What did you find? The last door! We found door nine! What? Come on! Just follow us! We'll explain on the way! Okay. Well, if that's the case... Wait for me. We should get going as well. Jumpy! We finally made it! Yeah. 
It's finally time. We've reached the end. But something's bothering me. Only three to five people can go through the numbered door. Seven of us are on our way to door nine. That means that, best case scenario, there will be two of us who have to stay behind. Two people. Is there a way? 4.30. We've only got 90 minutes left. I've got no time to wonder about it now. Hey! Junpei! June! What the hell are you two doing? Hurry it up! Let's go, Jumpy! Yeah. I know I told you I'd explain it earlier, but honestly, there ain't much to explain. After we split off from you guys, the four of us got into the elevator on the left, and that took us to the other side of the grate. After that, we headed down another hallway. It took us toward the bow, and eventually to the number six that you two found earlier. We opened it and kept going. There was another locked door behind it, like usual, but this time we had to complete two different areas before we could unlock it. Once we were through that door, there was another hallway that went the other direction, toward the stern. So, on your way, you found the elevator? That's right. So, in other words, you kinda did a lap, huh? You came from that side to this side. Yeah. So, where's the number nine door? Over here. Uh. By the way, you know, it's because of Santa that we're all here right now. Really? Huh? That all seven of us are going to door nine. What? You don't get it? Santa, Seven, and Lotus, what's their digital route? Nine. That's right. They could have just left me behind and kept going if they'd wanted to. But they didn't. Huh. Really? Yes, because Santa wouldn't let them. He said we can't leave June and the others behind. a good man. <laughs> That's why we went looking for you guys. And then you got on the elevator and went back to the central staircase. That's right. Hmm. Well, uh, I wouldn't have called that one. Uh, that Santa would be the one to stick up for you. I... Oh, don't get me wrong. I don't mean that Seven and Lotus said they wanted to leave me behind. We were just talking about it and Santa objected to it first. Is that so? We're here. So, is this... Yeah. There's no other place for us to go. Nope. Just look around. There's a big old iron wall at the end of the hallway. The other hallways on the left and right are blocked by metal grates. I see. All right. Let's get moving. <sighs> oh. No way. <sighs> the nine door. We're finally here. No doubt about it. This is door nine. <laughs> oh, finally! This is the last... Junpei, look behind you. What? Behind? What? Why? A door... And oh, nine. that's right. The, there's two door nines. There's another one? I thought something else happened, Jesus. Hey, what the hell? What the hell is going on here? There's a red there, too. That means... And of course it won't open. Why? Why the hell are there two doors? Do you think perhaps one is the right door and the other is the wrong one? I don't know about that. It seems unlikely. What makes you say so? Well, think about all the rooms we've been through so far. They're full of puzzles. There are always hints about how to solve them. I'm pretty sure there aren't any rooms where we just had to go with our best guess and leave it to instinct to solve the puzzle. Do you really think that at the very end of the game, Zero's going to suddenly throw in something that depends entirely on luck? Then you're saying there's some sort of hint in this room? No, I don't think there's a hint anywhere in here. I searched it very well when I was in here before. I didn't find anything that might have been a hint, though. Hmm. Well then, that means... Yeah, both of these are the right door. I mean, if you think about it... Zero never actually said there was only one door with a nine on it. It is hidden, but an exit can be found. Seek a way out. 
seek a door that carries a nine. So if there are two number nine doors, if we split it up, right? That's not gonna work. You've got a notebook and a pen, right? Can I borrow them? Yeah, here. Look at this. You get it? The numbers on the top are all the combinations with digital roots of nine. The numbers on the bottom are the people who don't fit. There's only eight possibilities if we split up into two groups of three or four people. So... If three people go through the door, then four are left behind. If four go through, then three are left behind. Right? Yeah. Away. <laughs> Is this because we don't have Snake with us? Or... Nine, as well? <sighs> hmm. <sighs> Come to think of it... What is this room? It looks like it's set up for some kind of ceremony, but what kind? Alter? A coffin? No, it, it couldn't possibly be. Okay, I give up. I give up. I figured if we sat around here long enough, someone would volunteer. But I guess nobody's got the guts to do it. What are you talking about? What? You guys didn't figure it out yet? <sighs> fine, fine. Let me enlighten you. Clover was mostly right with her little explanation earlier, but she missed something. She wasn't really wrong, she just... Ah, screw it! Let me just write it out. Okay. What? If you're trying to leave with a group of three and a group of four and get everybody out, Clover's right. But there's another way. Only one combination, though. If you split us up into groups of three, three, and one, you can make this combination. What? Wait, this means... Oh... So... He's wanting to sacrifice himself. Don't get me wrong here, I'm not trying to copy Ace or anything like that. Even if he hadn't been the hero back in the big hospital room, I'd still be saying the same thing. The same thing? Are you saying... Yeah. I'll stay behind. Uh... Why are you acting so heroic all of a sudden? Are you some kind of idiot? No, I am completely against this. I'll be goddamned if I'm gonna have to owe you for getting out of here. I'm against it too. I didn't want to leave Ace behind, and I don't want to leave you either. I don't like that idea. There's gotta be other options. I disagree as well. I can't say I care much for you being the hero. Well, there you go, Seven. Proposal denied. Clover's right. There's got to be a better way than this. Hmm. Doesn't make any sense. Whoa, hold on a minute. I haven't said anything yet. Are you... agreeing? You want to leave him here? Nah, I'm against it. I don't want to leave Seven here alone. Then I don't see how it matters. So wait, are you planning to stay behind I as well? alone. Huh? I said I don't want to leave Seven alone. What the hell are you... What? You don't get it? I can't leave just one person. I need two more. What? Three people, including seven. I'll be leaving behind three people. That's my proposal. No, those are my orders. What? What do you mean, orders? What the hell makes you think you can order us around? Who the hell's gonna listen to you? You all will. In three seconds, you won't have a choice. Say what? What? Santa, what are you doing? Three, two, one. Ah! See? I told you. Are you kidding me? Santa. What the hell, dude? Huh? What? Why? What the hell is that? The guns from the other room. What room? One of the rooms behind door six. 
I should have known he was gonna do this. I should have taken the gun. <laughs> well, it's too late now, fat ass. Damn it! <laughs> now, time for you to start following my orders. Ace, Lotus, congratulations! I've chosen you to come with me. Put your hands in the red. Hey, you deaf? I gave you an order. <sighs> right, fine. I didn't want to waste any bullets, but Don't you guys just fucking get do it. it. <sighs> he really shot it? But why? Santa, why are you... Santa? I thought... I thought you were one of us. I thought we were friends. What? You knew about the leaf words and the four leaf clover. What the hell is that shit? I've got no idea. What? You're lying. Shut up. Just shut up, you stupid bitch. Something's going on. He's doing this for a reason. You want me to put a bullet in your fucking head? I think he's still on our side. But I think he's playing coy. Santa. All right, assholes. What are you still standing there for? Why would he lie about it? Get over here and scan those bracelets. I don't have all day. Oh, what's the matter? Your hearing's starting to go? Going senile, maybe? Uh. <sighs> <sighs> That's it. It's the only way. Please, go. Huh? No way. <laughs> Jumpy, what are you saying? If you stay here, you're going to be stuck, Jumpy. And so will Clover and Seven. I know, but you don't need to worry about us. We'll figure something out. Right, Seven? Uh, right. You just leave it to us. It's gonna piss me off to do what Santa says, but... Don't worry about me, either. There's still something I have to take care of. No, no! You can't! Ace, Lotus, don't come over! Don't worry about me! Please! <laughs> Please. Uh. <sighs> <sighs> Go. Oh, all right. Fine. All right. Now let's get those hands on the scanner panel. <sighs> <sighs> What's the holdup? What? You think I'm fucking around here? I don't give a shit about this girl. The red doesn't need a person, you know? All I need is the bracelet. You get it? Good. Now put your fucking hands on the scanner. I'm not gonna say it again. Fine. <sighs> Good job. Now, Lotus, pull that lever. As soon as the door opens, you get your ass in there. Try anything stupid, and you know what happens, right? Damn it. Good. Go. Later. do, Junpei? What do you mean, what do I want to do? What can we do? Alice. What the hell is that? Shh, quiet! Maybe? Or... Snake? Where is it coming from? Could it be... Uh, hey! I think it's coming from this coffin. You're right. Let's open it. But how? What are those muscles for? For show? You're telling me to force it open? Just Hell shut yeah. up and try. Damn it. 
It won't even budge. Not another one. Yeah, looks like it. Do you think we have to put in the right password or it won't open? I think so. Whoever or whatever's inside this thing wants out. And now. I know that. But how? Without a passcode, I, I don't think there's much we can do. Isn't there a hint somewhere? Well, let's look for one. Ugh, there's nothing here. Not making this easy, are they? <sighs> What's the passcode? What am I supposed to do? How can we figure it out? I need something. 